So originally I studied biology and I was always interested in synaptic plasticity as it relates to development but later on then as it relates to uh, learning and memory. As an example for that I was studying habituation. And habituation is a very basic form of learning, but it is also a form of sensory filtering. And so this, through this road, I came to um, study sensory filtering. So our brain constantly receives sensory information from, coming from our senses. The brain has to cope with that inundating information that is constantly really bombarding our brain and uh, so there are mechanisms to filter this vast amount of information. So we study these basically inbuilt mechanisms in the sensory processing pathways that reduce the load of sensory information so that our brain and higher processing areas, our conscious uh, perception, can focus on things that are important the two disorders which are most prominently associated with sensory filtering disruptions are schizophrenia and autism spectrum disorders. Anecdotally, it has always been known, but in autism spectrum disorders, it has only been recently added to core symptoms for the, uh, the diagnosis of autism. What we do is uh, we study these basic mechanisms underlying sensory filtering in order to a maybe learn something about what is wrong or what goes wrong in the brains uh, of people that uh, have disrupted sensory filtering. Um, the other goal, of course, is to maybe identify targets, could be drug targets or targets for treatments in order to enhance sensory filtering disruptions. It is uh, fairly new, so it's an exciting area to venture out to explore this because so little is actually known about it but it's also um, that it has a potential huge impact on uh, treatments for disorders that are associated with disrupted sensory filtering.